What's going on everybody? And this is your boy, the Sebastian Alexander Bonet, but you can call me His Royal Highness and welcome to another episode of Royally Fucked. So I am coming to you looking scruff, tired, beat down. It is a Monday, we have our first major storm that's supposed to be bringing eight to 12 inches. I have family coming in town and it's just a, a bit much. And on top of that, I am exhausted. So I'm, gonna, I'm here creating a little content for things that I've watched, things that I need to say, opinions that I need to get out, and so I am coming to you live, live, and in color, as my good sister T.S. Madison says, and we're going to press on. So hopefully you, my fellow royals, are doing well. Hopefully you are great out in your neck of the woods, wherever you are, and I am just praying that blessings are falling upon you, not like on the cast of The Real Housewives of Atlanta, season uh, 13, episode 2. Uh, boring last night. There was only one questionable. Okay, I'm not. This is going to be a very short, very short um, review of the Real Housewives of Atlanta season 13, episode two. I think they just need to just end the Real Housewives of Atlanta, end it for like maybe three or four seasons, and come back with a completely, completely fresh new cast. I think there should be like a cap after the, you know, for any, for any uh, housewife or, uh, or a reality franchise, you get 10 years on the air, unless your ratings are like through the roof. But 10 years on air, if you make it 10 years, and then they take it off for five years, give people time to miss it. And then you come back and you recast it same franchise, Real Housewives of Atlanta, or Real Housewives of Potomac, or Real Housewives of Salt Lake City, or Beverly Hills, or Orange County, or New York, or New Jersey, or Dallas, or there was one in Miami, I think, at one point. But anyways, recast it, brand new, with new faces, and let that run for another 10 years. Keeps it fresh, keeps it, keeps it interesting, and you're not paying out these big, big salaries because people are getting the big head, i.e. Nene, about what well, I'm the OG. I've been here, and and not to say that she should not be paid what she, you know, what she thinks. Well, not what she thinks she should be paid, but what she deserves to be paid. There is a difference. Uh, but anyways, neither here nor there. It was very boring last night. You know, Kenya crying about not being wanted and not being with Mark and deciding if she's going to file for divorce and Cynthia's talking about this fucking wedding in the midst of a whole ass pandemic. Uh, people like that just get on my nerves. They ultimately get on my nerves because it's like, like her husband said, we are in a pandemic. People are dying. People are sick. And if you and I go down to the courthouse and we get married, that should be enough. But you already had your big grand wedding. It is recorded. It is in the archives. It is on Bravo. You can see it. You don't have to have it every time. Because, bitch, if you get divorced seven times, bitch, you think you're going to wear a white dress every time and have a big, lavish wedding? Why? Why? You didn't get it right the first time, so you know, hopefully you get it right the second time. Um, but it was just, it was very boring, very lackluster. We meet Kenya's homegirl, new homegirl. Didn't particularly care for her. She gives me that she's gonna be doing too much. You know, I, I spoke before um, on one of the reviews of the Potomac Halfwives. There is a formula. There is a formula to stay active and relevant on these shows, as far as being the messy starter, the bone collector, the one that likes to fight, the one that likes to cause drama. If you continue to do that, you are um, hopefully securing your space. To be on these shows for for the long haul, for longevity, um, and is your, it, there is a formula to it. If you're meek and mild, i.e., um, Kim feels uh, that one season she was on there, which I don't know why she decided to come on there, but you're not going to last. This show, these shows are not for the respectable, if I should say it that way, um, but. It was very boring. The only thing that really piqued my interest, we meet Drew Sedona. She's an actress and a singer. She was on the game and she did what set it off the stage play, whatever stuff that I really don't care about. Um, but one thing that I found interesting 
And I'm trying to determine if this is true or not because back to the whole formula thing, creating a storyline, creating something that makes you interesting, that people want to see, that people want to unfold, see unfold, and be a part um, as a fly on the wall. Um, and that was when, I, don't, I can't remember her husband, I'm not looking at my phone because I'm not that invested, uh, to where she mentioned that her husband, they got in an argument and her husband left for three days. Now, I'm going to preface this by saying that I am a single individual, not committed to anyone, not dating anyone with no children, not committed. And even in that, I feel that there was something wrong with that. How can you be married and leave your house, let alone for one day, but three, and your significant other does not know where you are? Be it gay, straight, whatever you, you gender yourself, see yourself as, how can you, even if you are dating in a, in a monogamous relationship, you go missing for three days and your spouse, partner, boyfriend, girlfriend does not know where you are. And in this case on the show, when you, when you as the person that left say, well, what are we doing right and what are we doing wrong? And, and she, her, Drew, I, me, answers the question, you want to get upset and get offended. I don't understand that. What kind of man? And I understand you have to cool off. I Because I have a temper out of this world. I understand that sometimes you have to go somewhere. Sometimes you got to go with everybody knows your name. When, 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 they, when they're so glad that you came, you want to be what people see that trouble's all the same. You want to go where somebody knows your name. I get it. Shout out to Cheers, one of my favorite shows. Um, but I get that you have to cool off. You have to go down to the local bar. You got to go talk to your homeboy. You got to take a walk around the park. But you come back. You, you, you cool off. You come back. And even when you come back, you might not say much as a, hey, I don't want to talk about this right now. Give me some time to, 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 to decompress and deal with my emotions and then we can chit chat about it. But to be gone for three whole days, that's one. You live in Atlanta and you leave Atlanta too. Not just leave Atlanta, you leave the state. Three, you're down in Florida and when she asks you where you are, you act like you not act like you do not want to tell her where you were. Now again, part of this says, okay, is this made up shit? Because of course, pillow talk. We own this show. We got to secure the bag. We got to make it do what it do. You know, people in the background may know mama them, auntie, uncles them know. Listen, all this is fake. What you gonna see on the Real Housewives of um, Atlanta? He ain't do that shit. He know better than do that shit. But we have to secure our bag. We have to be on here for a season or two, right? Okay. But if it was real, that is a major hurdle for me. As a man, as a woman, whatever. If my mate leaves for three days and I don't know where they are, outside of them being selfish, being a very selfish move, if something happened to me and the kids, I don't know how to get in contact with you. Nobody knows how to get in contact with you. If something happens to you while you're in Tampa, I don't know how to get in contact with you. I'm getting a phone call from the sheriff's office or the deputy office that you got to don't know where you are. How can you be committed and married to someone and they do not know where you are? That struck me as odd. And she had every right to get upset. You have a whole ass family, a whole ass wife, three kids, two of them which are yours, but three that you're raising, and you just say, well, bump it, I'm out. Something is not right with me. That's, that's cheating behavior. Point blank period. To be somewhere for three days? Cheating behavior. Three days and your spouse don't know where you are? Cheating behavior. There's another bitch in town. Whole other fucking family. You couldn't go down to the, the round western downtown on Peachtree and sit down there to cool off? 
You can go over in Buckhead at the courtyard over there and stay in, 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 in Kulaw. You can go to the Georgian Terrence and cool off. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't get it. You flew to Tampa or you drove seven hours to, come on now, let me think, let, let's process this clearly. So you got in a fight and you bought a ticket to go to Tampa. Same day tickets. Same day tickets are expensive as fuck. Same day. Or you got in the car and you drove to Tampa. That's at least seven to eight hours. From Atlanta down to the Florida Georgia line, Valdosta area, that's clean three and a half, four hours. Right at four, right at four hours. And from the Florida Georgia, because you're already on 75, from the Florida Georgia line to Tampa, it's another two and a half, three hours. So you drove six to seven, six to seven and a half hours. You weren't cool on that drive, driving six and a half, seven hours. I don't, now, I don't know what they argued about. Don't know what it, but you didn't cool off in that time frame and you still had to sit down there three days and drive back. Something ain't adding up to me. But again, it could be the magic of reality TV. Creating and making and indulging in a storyline. So, um, that's the only thing that I have about this episode. That's the only memorable thing. Um, kind of, sort of. Shout out to um, Riley, Riley Burst. Uh, graduated from her high school. Whoop, whoop. Going to NYU, coming up our way. Whoop, whoop. Shout out to Candy, your baby, your oldest baby, then graduated. Whoop, whoop. You know, hey, Mama Joyce, we didn't see, we ain't seen you in a while. So welcome back to the fold. And that's really, really, really about it. That's all I have to talk about. This is the review for The Real Housewives of Atlanta, season 13, episode two. I am your boy, the Sebastian Alexander Bonet, but you can call me his Royal Highness. And thank you for tuning into another episode of Royally Fucked. I will holler at you guys later. Peace and much love.